This is for Ant again, uh, episode number two for our podcast with Emereb and uh, with Marlisa. Yeah. Thank you for joining today. Um, we are going to talk about uh, Airbnb, booking, uh, .com, all this kind of uh, rental, mm -hmm. daily rental, short term rental and investment. So let's start today for this uh, second episode about property uh, in Bali. Okay, Airbnb, right? Now yeah. that like Bali is a hot destination for people to come to stay longer. Obviously, you know, like Airbnb is more popular than hotel because the size of the space that you can get in the Airbnb, right? And then um, it's, it's really interesting, like, you know, like, uh, like i have been living in europe like for three years now and a lot of like uh, people ask me like hey if you if, if i have like a spare money i want to spend in bali to build yeah. my airbnb like three hundred thousand yeah. dollar like what can i do with this money can i even run an airbnb with three hundred thousand dollar in bali yeah good question yeah indeed a lot of people want now to come to bali to uh invest mm -hmm. on uh, on properties uh, I would say between most of the people coming to us, our budget between 100000 and maybe $300,000. Yeah. And it did, what can I do with that? Yeah. Is it um, realistic? Yeah, is it know? realistic or not? Um, yes, after it's always depending in the, which area you're going to invest. And the ROI is always depending also on the location, if you're close to the sea. I mean, if today you want to have a beachfront, $100,000 is not realistic for sure, mm -hmm. okay? But now if you have a budget between 100000 and 300000 you want to be five minutes from the sea or by scooter or by car, it's it's realistic. I mean, Bali is, is a small island, so you're always close to the sea. So what can you do? This is the, the question. Is first, you need to contact people, like we said in our previous podcast, that have the ability to uh, check all the regulation or contract, etc. And now, how can I do it legally? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would say it, it, it depends. It's, it's like uh, everywhere in the world, you know. If you go to LA, you want to, uh, you have a budget. Can I have a beachfront or can I have a beachfront in Bali for this price? Today, for hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollars or three hundred, you will not get beachfront. Okay, okay? so forget about beachfront. Beach front, if yeah, we only yeah. have like hundred twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can get if you go on the east side of Bali, yeah, uh, on the north side of Bali. But now, if we are on the hot place like mm -hmm. Canggu, Berawa, or Perenan, or, or Uluwatu, all these things, it's not really the budget at the moment. However, if you want to make a business on Airbnb, you can find this kind of property five minutes from the beach, 10 minutes from the beach, mm -hmm. and you can find this kind of uh, investment. Um, it's always depending also if you are looking to uh, buy the, the land and build yourself, okay. or if you are going to just uh, buy the villa uh, of plan already. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's possible. It's so, possible and, and to have a good ROI for that. Yeah. Okay. But can I really do this Airbnb, you know, like because um uh the question is like they live in europe right mm -hmm. they want to have this airbnb as their additional yeah. uh, uh money coming into the account right but can we do it remotely is it okay to do it at all I, like they don't live in indonesia right like yeah. they they are not the resident of indonesia this is the second question is first question yes can i get the villa <laughs> yes you can get the villa now can i make business with the villa it's another topic, and this is very important to de discuss about that because basically you, what you're going to do is to generate income in Indonesia through a property mm -hmm. that um, you own or you don't own or you rent. So yes, you can by regulation, okay? But you have to fulfill some requirements, okay? okay? Um, the first... Uh, it's uh, where is your property located, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, if you are, like we said in a previous podcast, in an area that is a green zone, uh, basically... Uh, so it, I cannot rent it out? It, it's, not, it's not a zoning for business, you know, because it's, not, it's, a, it's a zoning to make rice, potato, mm. and not business with that. So I can rent it out or no? Like No. No, but so secretly can? <laughs> Secretly, can is not is not something that uh, we recommend for okay. sure. Okay, um, Indonesia and Bali um, 
is a is a developing country and not developing is a developed country now. I mean, when you're in Bali or in Jakarta, uh, the country has everything that the other countries have, mm -hmm. and they have law and they have regulation. Of course. Okay, so when you are planning, like in other cities in the world, to make an Airbnb, there is some regulation to uh, to fit. So the first things I would say is first when you buy the property. Mm -hmm. Or when you lease your property is to make sure that where the property is allow you to make this Airbnb business. Okay. okay. So Airbnb is classified as a short-term accommodation uh, business classification, exactly. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So <coughs> it's exactly that. Is what is the purpose? Okay. When you invest, you can have two hundred thousand or three hundred thousand. You buy your land. You develop your property. You develop your your business. You develop your house. After, what is the purpose? Do you want to do it on a short term or on a long term? Mm -hmm. Long term is basically your subleasing or your leasing your property. Short term, we are, uh, it's a classification, not as an hotel, but it's a classification as basically making a hostel or a guest house for people. Yeah. You know, a lot of cities in the world have regulation now. I'm French, and in Paris, we know that a lot of uh, Airbnb have been kicked out mm. from the center of the city because it was in a residential area, okay. and they were not paying tax. Mm. And we all know now that Airbnb is also giving information mm. to some uh, government office, for example, in France or in UK, and also in uh, in Indonesia. They so start the to same share thing information. Happening in, exactly. in Bali as well. Yeah. yeah. So. When you have this kind of uh, property and you want to make it, it's important to know this regulation. So let's say now you, uh, you have your property and you're in a touristic area. Yeah. Okay. So you the zoning is that, uh, for tourism. Tourist, mm -hmm. Tourism. If you're in tourism, in this case, you can do it. But it's not like I have my property, it's okay, I put on Airbnb and it's done. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you have tax to pay, you have license yeah. to get. So we can help people to get this license. You have several options. The first one is you can make uh, a company. Okay. okay. This company you create, it doesn't take time. Eh? In one one week, two weeks, it's done. We make the company. You can even get the, um, a stay permit with that and live in Indonesia and come to Indonesia to see your property and, mm -hmm. and see supervise your investment. Okay. And with this property, it's not because this company, it's not because the company is done that you can put it. You know, you need to get the proper license this license will be allow you to manage your property okay so okay. my th this company will be to manage this like villa that i will be renting out as an airbnb yeah mm -hmm. but the license to rent it out doesn't belong to your company okay because in indonesia for short-term rental i'm not talking about hotel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay i'm talking about guest house yeah. or small uh, property i mean small or property. like in indonesia we call it pondok wisata exactly, right so yeah. let's familiarize also yeah. our podcast uh, <laughs> yeah. listener like like you know this is a pondok wisata license exactly. for the pondok airbnb wisata. so once you are an Indo uh, you have a villa and you want to make a short term rental mm -hmm. the license to rent it out is only uh, eligible to indonesian yeah. Okay. So this Indonesian or landowner, depending if it's the landowner, has to process the license. Mm -hmm. And you, you have the ability with your company to manage the property that you own yeah. or to rent by an agreement with this person that mm -hmm. rented out the property. Mm -hmm. And so your income inside your company is le legit by the management of the property, not by the license to rent it out. It's just it's just technical, but basically it's possible to do. But what people who listen have to be careful is to make sure that legally the property that you buy or to rent has a license to rent it out. Okay. Okay. Because even now <laughs> when you go to Airbnbs and some people when they will try to um how to say to register the property, Airbnb is asking information. Is asking information about the company, about the, um, the, the, the tax, for example, number, all these things to make sure that you own or you have the rights to, to do it. So yeah. um, it's important to, to notice that, yeah. I think like 
opening a company is a bit like a too scary thing to do as a foreigner, you know, because mm. like, you know, if you open a company to for the sake of managing only like one villa, I don't think it's worth the investment to actually open a company, manage the tax every month. Uh, you know, like if, if, if at some point uh, they want to leave Indonesia for good, then you need to close the company, go into like the solutions process. It's just too much. Yeah. Like what's the alternative? Like, can I just let somebody else manage to fill up for me and uh, I collect the money? Like, yeah, I mean, well, first, I, c- I can understand that it's scary to, uh, to, or it's not scary, but, you know, it's a responsibility when you have a company. Yeah. So uh, you have several options with that because company is not complicated to open. We can op- uh, open, like I said, in a few weeks. Um, you can have employees, somebody that manage the property for you, mm-hmm. you know? I mean, even if you have a company, you can still have hire somebody to manage the property for you and the income is coming to you. After the second option is, there is a lot, lot of uh, management company in Bali. Yeah. Okay, we have a lot of partners on that. Okay. Um, but for sure, when you uh, give to a management company, uh, this person are taking a fee. Okay? Of course. <coughs> of course. They're not yeah. working for free. Yeah, so. nobody, yeah. <laughs> nobody I mean. working for free. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end, it's a choice, okay, should I, uh, hire, make a company, and hire somebody that will manage my property. Okay, so it's like uh, the one, the cleaner will be on my payroll, the gardener will be on my payroll, the pool people will be on the payroll. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have these charges. Yeah. Okay, but the charges, after depending, you know, some uh, management company depending where you are, it can be ten to twenty percent. Yeah. Cut off. Airbnb take already. How much? S- Seventeen or oh. something percent. Mm-hmm plus the tax and etc. you know? And also what is important, uh, it's become technical, but when you're living outside, okay, and you're not resident in Indonesia, mm-hmm. your taxation is 20%. Yeah. But if you are resident, you have a company and you have your state permit, your taxation will be 10%, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So it's, it's something also to, to consider and to discuss on the, the business plan, so you can have discuss with us, or you can uh, discuss yeah. with uh, with other people to uh, discuss about this business plan yeah. and what is more advantageous. So for sure, yeah, you have two options. One, you make your company. Second, you can delegate. But when you delegate to management company, you have to make sure again that the, the, cost, proper, the, the cost, the tax, and also the license. Yeah, You know, it's not because like we said, I have my villa and I just give to the management company. If if the property still have no license, how do you do? How do you legit, uh, legit make your property legit on Airbnb? Because if tomorrow somebody comes to your door and say, do you have the license? Even mm-hmm. if you gi- you say I give to a management company, you are responsible. It's your property. It's your property you bought. It's the property you lease. Mm-hmm. So this is very uh, important in both options. Uh, to consider the the legal part behind to yeah. make sure that you can rent it out. Is it guaranteed that I will get this license of my villa or like wh- what's the reason the government will like you know like oh, sorry we cannot give you this pondok wisata license right? But like I said, the, um, first it depends on zoning. Okay. okay, I mean if you want to get a pondok no wisata green zone. on a green zone, no green zone, you know it's uh, by definition it's not possible. Okay, yeah. after. <laughs> the license is uh, allocated to Indonesian person. Mm-hmm. So it's not yourself that is applying for for the license. Mm-hmm. So at the end, the re- I don't see any reason why the, the government will not give the license, the license to the person, if, uh, except if the, the person, I don't know, has a, uh, a criminal issue or whatever, you mm-hmm. know, but uh, there is no, I would say, technical or reason. The only reason that would happen is is the zoning, the building permits also of the, the villa, for example. Okay. Uh, that can influence the, the decision at the end. But mm-hmm. the process is quite simple. Okay, uh, and we can help uh, clients to apply for this license, and doesn't take time. So, okay, yeah. but I think so. Then back again, right? If like um, my friend has three hundred thousand dollar, want to come, then w- what we suggest them to check into it for the first time is like check the property first, and then see whether they are in the correct zone or not. If it's not even like in the correct zone, that is a no go because you're 
objective, your end objective is to be able to rent it out as Airbnb, yeah. as a pondok wisata. Yeah. So that's the first thing, right? We e- need to check into. Exactly. And I heard also, you know, like uh, sometimes in uh, Bali, this kind of like green zone, uh, yellow zone. Yellow zone is like for the residential or like even the mixed zone, like uh, is for the mixed uh, functions of mm. residential, mm-hmm. you know, like gym, uh, like uh, for people to have businesses. It's also important that you check to several uh, departments because sometimes the agrarian department say that okay, it's not in the green zone, but in the other department it says is the protected rice field. So it's being called LSD. So like lahan sawah, uh, what is the D one? I forgot, but it's English. Like it's a protected. Of rice field, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there's yeah, like yeah. there's a lot of department you need to <clears throat> go through, and I think like it's like yeah. before you s- even spend anything like three hundred thousand dollars is big. It's like huge amount of money. Like you cannot like reverse it if you already buy something. You cannot just like hey, by the way, this is a green zone. <laughs> Can you refund me yeah. my my no, money? It's never like happened like that. You know, this is the point. Yeah, it's what we were saying is that at the beginning it's really important to make sure through due diligence that mm-hmm. where you're going to put your investment. Um, you have the right to do it. And like you said, it's, it, it's very, for example, we had a client um, uh, in, um, not in Bali, but Lombok. And one part of the land was a mangrove, okay, or wet w- w- yeah. area, and mm-hmm. the other part of the land was a touristic area. So, so sometimes you have to make sure that- The border between yeah, each other. Yeah, the border, yeah. yeah, between each other, that the full part of the land can be used as you want. And residential is interesting because um, some residential area, you are allowed now when you go to the to the the land um, land office, mm-hmm. allowed to apply for the for the pondok wisata, you know. So, but you have a certain percentage, depending again on the land that you can build. Normally, uh, you cannot make more or two uh, uh, level of the house. I thought you cannot passing the. Uh, coconut tree. <laughs> <laughs> Again, depends, right? The There's a lot of like different sizes of coconut yeah. tree. <laughs> yeah. Or for example, there, there is a. Uh, we were looking for land for um, for one of the clients, uh-huh. a very beautiful land, and near uh, a temple. Yeah. And so the rule also, you cannot go over the temple, you know, mm. because the temple. Then you you help build the temple higher, right? So <laughs> yeah, you can help the co- community <laughs> yeah. behind. Yeah. So so y- you have this kind of rules that are very important to check, okay. um, because um, we have the general rules that say okay, green zone, no yellow zone, it's not preferable, but. Um, tourist is nice, but the problem of touristic area is also that tomorrow you can have a discotheque mm-hmm. or your club, you know, uh, yeah. next to your house because um, in a, in a touristic area basically you can make a club, restaurants, I mean everything. So if your property uh, tomorrow morning you have somebody that is opening a club, exactly. You, you so I I think it's also important, you know, like. Uh, to make sure that this property is in the good uh, uh, condition because yeah. like you know Indonesia Bali is a to- tropical country is very humid like yeah. you can build thing from like a wood and then suddenly tomorrow the wood broken into two pieces right or even like the worst thing is like termites yeah. you know you buy a property from far far away and then like <laughs> uh, the next thing that you don't want to face is like your your Airbnb uh, gas give you a bad review and, like this termite suddenly like <laughs> fell over from this or even like snake you know like yeah. you can find snake in the like a ceiling <laughs> like so like this is like a nightmare right like if, if like uh, like we spend this like money and then like buying a property what what is the thing that we should really look into you know like in terms of like this kind of a condition that like face the tropical humidity in bali yeah this is uh i think Going back to uh, also with the initial question is I have three hundred thousand dollar yeah and I want to invest and for the land for sure compared to what you can find in some places the price of the land is still advantageous in Bali okay so it's better to build yeah for me it's what I think is if you have this kind of money find the land build something. Yeah. and supervise or hire somebody to supervise exactly. this development because a lot of properties are, are sometimes built quite fast with cheap material it looks very nice in the photo yeah in the photo <laughs> 
And if you are in the US or if you're in Australia and you buy something on pictures or you visit it and you get you, the quality. Right? Yeah. I mean, this is this is the, the point. Like you say, most of the time, I mean, when like here, it's a lot of you can have rain, humidity, you know, you can have termites and all this uh, uh, condition affect a lot of uh, the property. Yeah. Yeah. And so thinking mm -hmm. the land, I think, is is OK. Yeah. But when you build, don't look too much on uh, saving money on the on the construction, and the cost of construction for sure is cheaper than in some other countries. Mm -hmm. But again, if you use cheap, you get also uh, sometimes bad condition, and it will be difficult to uh, to last. You will find some uh, scar on the on the wall yeah. after a few months. Uh, you know, because the the land also is, it can it can move like sometimes. Um, so make soil tests. It's very important yeah. when you also buy your land. Make sure that with a proper architect that you you can build some things solid and that can last for a month and for years. And um, and don't use cheap materials. Yeah. 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 Because and also. I was with uh, this uh, uh, talking with uh, a client again last time, and uh, he wanted to talk and if we could help to supervise also the the, the project, you know, because you you have contractors and the mm -hmm. contractors on the picture, you know, is uh, bringing you material, and uh, you order something, and the day after when he's coming back, they replace you know, that they, material. They replace or they change else. because they didn't find. It's not they don't want. It's not a scam. For example, it's just, I'll give you an example. On a property, last time I wanted to uh, repaint. And so normally the property is white. And uh, the guy came back with a beige, you know. <laughs> beige, I yeah. said, yeah, this is not the color. <laughs> I said, no, but this is the same. Because for him it's the same, you okay, know. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't try to scam you. It's just that he... You, you the, need to have like somebody who, yeah. who, you know, like supervise this project. And I totally agree. I think if you want to run an Airbnb and you have... Uh, budget and you have a choice between uh, buying an already there villa uh, yeah. which you don't know what is the quality when they're building it like what is, what is like the problem coming with that already uh, built property mm -hmm. I think if you have time if you have the money it's always better to just purchase the land and then build it supervise the building yeah. because the maintenance cost can go really really yeah. expensive if you are in Indonesia you know like molds <laughs> like leaking yeah. uh, ceiling, yeah. like whatever yeah, it is, uh, and it, uh, and and it's bad for your Airbnb because how? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if uh, people knows, but Airbnb is also making uh, um, rating, you know. Mm -hmm. So if your property mm -hmm. has good comment, they will bring you also uh, over the top, and uh, they will show you the property first compared to the the property that have bad comment. So if you start to have a a property after a few months that has uh, some uh, issue, termite, mold, all these things, y you will start to have bad comments, you will be not shown on Airbnb, and your ROI will be uh, Yeah, uh, because you down, spend money you know? to maintain yeah. this. Y places. You save your money for all your life, or not, and you want to invest $100,000, 200000 300000 I think it's important to say, to, to have a budget on this, to have somebody to supervise, mm -hmm. Or if you buy a property, make sure to ask an architect or to yeah. ask a professional contractor or surveyor to recheck the material, yes. to recheck the property, to make sure that everything is, is good for the long term. Because otherwise, your ROI will be affected. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the first steps that you take, like for example, like doing this due diligence and then like um, being in contact with a good architect and actually using the architect is like very important. Like I, I, I don't suggest like to skip this step because yeah. okay, okay, you spend more to pay for this service, but this is the service that like will save you a lot of money in the future. Mm -hmm. Like um, just for an example, like I build a villa remotely, like uh, like, but I go through like so many meetings with like architect. Like for example, like I I have like ten different architect meetings. I really take time for me to like know that okay, this architect is good. They really care about me. They mm. really want to do like the best because like a good architect will make sure the building will be built 
good because they this is their masterpiece right yeah. they want it to be shown in their portfolio so yeah. i think it's important like if your architect also care about the building and they also like um, give options of like uh, the building contractor and then your what you're saying is correct like don't choose a cheap materials yeah. you know but again like what is cheap right like wh- maybe we can wh- we can yeah. share like how much is it like realistically to build in bali like i i would say it's uh, is uh, we have this question it's always depending on on um on the the, the land for example the if your land is very inclined and yeah. you have suddenly to to uh, to Put make the, the rock and yeah, everything rocks and make the, the land flat so it it will it will double or it will be cost a, a lot so the comparison i would say is if you're in the us okay and you want to build here you can divide uh, maybe by two mm-hmm. or by three but again depending the the material you know let's say if you see a property at three hundred thousand dollar that is for sale you imagine that the person that built this property and buy the land didn't buy it for or build it for 280 you know of course so it means that maybe their cost have been 150 in total you know mm-hmm. because they try to make a lot of margin on this because they have uh commission to pay yeah. marketing to pay etc so i would say it's difficult to say what is the cost because it's depending again on the material you choose mm-hmm. but if you already have an idea on how much it will cost to you in australia how much it will cost to you in the uh, us you can take this cost and maybe divide by two yeah. on the on the on the, on the total uh, budget okay. so on these two parts um like i said you can think that it's more advantageous to buy off plan or something which is good because it's already here it's already uh, ready to be rented out if there is all the license mm-hmm. but please double check with an architect with uh, with the right person if the material that are used are correct yeah. and the most difficult part is like uh, a lot of uh, villa developers in bali they are all new developers like they're mm-hmm. like in in coming new developers right as an indonesian i find it easier for me uh, to buy an off plan house or something because i know i can trust the developer they're like yeah. really big developer they want to uh, protect their name right like I know I will only buy from this developer because you know the house material is good and everything they will not like let me down but in Bali we don't know them right like they yeah. all knew so like so really check right yeah it, it, it's like yeah yeah and you're right you know I would take an example it's like now everybody make two or three story with their phone and everybody's marketing manager you know yeah. so, <laughs> so for, for developer is the same there, there is a lot of new entrant yeah. on the markets and there uh, are they're thinking that they are contractor or they are developer and things. You have big names, and I would say trust big names, trust uh, reputable uh, companies that have been in Bali for a long time. Mm -hmm. They know the market. Mm -hmm. uh, They have already project that they develop for a while. Okay, it's very important because we have very good people and very good companies that are working here. Same for the management company. We have good one also we are working here, but go don't go to facebook and uh, people uh, on facebook saying that they are contractors and they uh, they develop and when you ask like the portfolio small business, yeah, yeah they have nothing i mean we are you, not you, against small business no, but like yeah. make sure you get referral at exactly, least like yeah. referral checks yeah. right yeah. Like, if the person work for 20 years uh on uh, for another company or he work in the in the business and now he's opening his own yeah. business mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, exactly. he has reference. This yeah. is somebody that's developed. But yeah. if you have somebody that just go out from the architect school or from <laughs> a, from the school and suddenly is opening and offering the service on Facebook for for cheap things, I would think at uh, twice before going. Well, again, you know. if it's too good to be true, it's too good to be true. Yeah. Don't, sure. don't go uh, there. If there is a doubt, that there is no doubt. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if there's a doubt, there's no doubt. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I think yeah, I- important to to look at that. Developing your your own villa, sometimes you may think it's it's a nightmare. Like I said, um, oh, there is too much. I'm in Europe. How can I do? Um, first, you can be in Europe. You can be in US. You can be in Australia. For example, Emirates will help you to mm-hmm. uh, to find the land. 
So he wants to find the land, he wants to uh, develop, you have a project in mind, you tell us, we can visit the property, we can visit the land, we can take pictures for you, we can mm -hmm. take videos, we send you the videos, if a real estate or if uh, a property that you find on Oops. on the uh, internet show you face A, we can show you face B, so we can make sure that everything is correct. We can accompany you to make sure that also the the, the soil is good, uh, makes an organized soil test and everything. So, and at the end, you just come to buy the land to sign if you want, or we can even accompany you to, uh, for the signature. So I think what is important in this project is to always have somebody independent, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. that can make what we call RFP, request for proposal, to find the good contractors, organize the meeting with you, so to save your time. And by saving your time, we save also your money in the future. After, we can assist also to follow up of with this management and construction. Or the second option is to buy off plan. But off plan is check more. The yeah, plan, yeah, check it. And off plan is more expensive than if you do it yourself. Yeah. Off plan give you a uh, fast, faster ROI because uh, you uh, the the property is ready already. Even if you the license, etc., but it's ready. And the other one, developing yourself, takes more months, but uh, ROI is higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's uh, is the two options that I think on for Airbnb, people can look at, and company again or management company. I think this is also depending on how you want to do it. Management company, you have nothing to worry; they yeah. do everything for you. Yeah. Check the tax, check everything, check if they have the license, if the, there is the right license to, to rent it out. But they take you more fee and making your company yourself, manage having a, an employee to do it. At the end, it's less fee, you know? I mean, you're not going to pay, I mean, if you want to do it, but you're not going to pay $2,000 a month somebody mm. to manage your property, you yeah. know? So the fee at the end is not so, uh, so high. So it's depending again, what's your, how you want to do it. Yeah. Okay, but most important thing is it's, it is possible to do it with the honey It's pot. possible and, and do it. Yeah, I, okay? I would say yeah, <laughs> do it. <laughs> and do it, do it because uh, at the end, Bali, as we said, it will be always Bali and Bali will be always a great place to live, always it will be a great place to attract people, to have a long-term uh, good return on investment. Even if in six months, you know, there is, I don't know, for any reason, or if there is a COVID again. The COVID uh, will not be for for six years, you know? So your property will always take value, you know? Yeah. It's uh, so you can always resell if you're freehold, or you can always resublease the remaining of your lease. So you have this in, uh, part of investment where you get money and you will get your ROI. So yes, do it, but do it properly with the right person. Uh, and what the, are you waiting <laughs> for? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> So yeah, so I think uh, we have the response, do it, yeah. invest in Bali. And uh, because the, like we said, it's uh, it's a fantastic opportunity. So thank you for joining uh, this second episode. Uh, we covered already on the first one, all the legal part, due diligence, make sure everything is, uh, is legal. We know now that we have to invest uh, in Bali. Uh, this is a fantastic opportunity uh, on Airbnb and short-term rental, but do it on the right way. Uh, we are waiting for you for the next episode, so don't forget to subscribe uh, to, the, to the channel and to our social media to know more and follow for the next one. Thank you very much.